Right then, lads, welcome back to Kosi's Arsenal Podcast. My name is Kosi. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in all parts of the world. We are back again on the podcast. Arsenal have been linked with over 11 plus wingers this summer. David Onstein and The Athletic confirmed that Arsenal will bring in two forwards this summer. One will be Gabriel Jesus, who is the main focus and the main point in Mikel Arteta's attack next season. But the next one will be a winger, a wide forward. One who can play on the right or on the left or at least on both wings. Now, we've been linked with a couple of them. Rafinha, Bowen, Gakpo, Nkuku, Nabri, Ousmane Dembele, Moussa Diabe. So many of them what you're gonna do in this video is very easy we're gonna be ranking all these players and we'll try to uh we'll try to place them in any of the three categories on the uh on the tier list perfect buy good deal and absolutely no chance so what you're going to do in the comment section you're going to join me i will be giving you all the statistics around these players i'm going to give you the strength and their weaknesses what they are to arsenal and what i think is exactly not important whether they have it it doesn't really matter we already have it so make sure you hit the like button subscribe to the podcast but join me in the comments below let's get this video to 500 likes let's get into the party now we'll start off with rafinha rafinha has been linked with the arsenal very very closely uh, this summer with arsenal submitting uh, an initial bid to leeds united however uh in this video want to see where he ranks is it is it a good deal for arsenal football club or is it a perfect buy uh, for us? I mean, I, I want to put him in that perfect buy category, but I'll leave him here uh, in the good deal. And these are my reasons. Look, listen. In the last two campaigns, uh, he has uh, he has or, you know he has been um, averaging very very good numbers. Last uh, last campaign, eleven goals and three asses. The campaign before that, six goals and six asses. I think it's a very exciting one. He's been solely independently holding that um that leads united attack especially without patrick bamford or the decline of patrick bamford and um uh and his injury has seen rafinha lift uh, leads united onto his shoulders alone and actually today we have had a big debate in the in the channel whatsapp group is he better than saka or saka better than rafinha we'll get to that uh in you know in probably in another video but in my opinion why I think it's just a good deal and not uh, the perfect one. If you look at Rafinha, he's just 25. It's going to cost Arsenal around 55 to 65 million euros. I don't see him as a player with lots of experience, huge chunk of experience. He's one that is um, a mixed buy. One for, for the future, but also one that is extremely better, uh, actually just better than what we have. I don't see him as very, very far away from Saka, very, very far away from... Uh, Martinelli, like you would say, Raheem Sterling. No, but it's a player that I think is clear of the players we have at the side. I think it would be a very, very good buy for Arsenal because it's a player that brings in a lot, uh, you know, a lot in the team. A player that gives you goals, a player that can take free kicks for you, and a player that you can trust when it comes to changing games. He can come off the bench and change a game, but he can also start, and he gives you that you know, solo uh, solo energy. A player who can make things happen by themselves. A player who can, you know, change a game that has, you know, we, we, you've tried to work as a team and it has failed and now you need a player who can do it alone. I think Rafinha is that kind of player. But at 65 million pounds, I think, 65 million euros, I think Arsenal should be going for a player who is there but i think rafinha is working to get there he's not yet at that highest top level but he will be there honestly he will be uh there he's costing more than arling harland honestly um i think he's just a good deal i don't i want i don't want to overhype him jared bowen now another one that i think is a good one and i, I don't think it's a perfect buy really uh according to what Arsenal want not, I wouldn't truly really put him there, but I'll put him in the no chance category. Jared Bowen. I don't see how uh, West Ham are going to sell him this summer, first and foremost. And if they're going to sell him, because he's English, he's going to cost a chunk of money. And that's why I'm going to put him in the no but uh, in, in the no chance category i think if rafinha is 65 million euros jared bowen is going to go for 75 80 million euros listen to this in last campaign 12 goals for him and 10 assets 
West Ham would be crazy to think that such a player is not going to give them at least 70 million euros. And for me, I, I've, li I've seen him. I've loved him. I think he's better than what we have at the moment because even the campaign before that, he had managed eight goals and five assists. So Arsenal going for Jared Bowen, of course, linked with the club. You know, us going for him is not a bad, uh, it's not a bad side. But in my opinion, 75 million euros uh, because it's English, no. And of course, I don't trust the durability of such players when it comes to uh, English players. At times, I just doubt their durability. They can give you a very, very good first season. But when things turn to serious, when they get in their prime, they at times dwindle and disappear. So for me, Arsenal should not invest all that money in Jared Bowen. No, I wouldn't really do that. Cody Gakpo, perfect buy. Now, you're going to wonder, aren't you? You're going to say, Cosi, you're crazy. I'm crazy, aren't I? I'm crazy about Arsenal. But why I think Cody Gakpo is a perfect buy? Listen to this. Last, go last campaign in the Dutch LDVZ, 13 goals and th uh, sorry, 13 goals and 12 assists. That is double figures in, in scoring goals and double figures in uh, assisting as well. This, the campaign before that, he had uh, scored seven and assisted three times. So, look, Cody Gakpo would cost Arsenal only £25 million. Pounds. That is the deal for me. That is a perfect deal. Monetarily, uh, you know, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, finances... That's a good deal. Economically, it's a good deal. And also, if you're looking at what Arsenal are looking at, you're looking for a player who can, you know, just challenge Saka. Uh, I think he's, you know, I think he can challenge him. He can give him a good run for his money. And also challenge the likes of Martinelli and the Moose Smith role uh, just to create that, you know, kind of competition uh, in the team. Gakpo is you know he is in that you know in, in that same age profile so probably doesn't bring in the experience that players like uh, Rafinha and Jared Bowen would be bringing into the team. But I think he's one that for me when you sign him you're signing someone that is just in and around that age you know age bracket and he's you know he's got the quality that you want at just 25 million euros for me he's just going to get better better and better actually to, to, to confirm what i'm saying leeds united are saying if they, if arsenal sign rafinha or if any club takes rafinha away from them they will replace him with cody Gakpo. linked with newcastle and linked with, uh, linked with um leeds united as well it's a bargain 30 million euros 25 million pounds get that done and that is real quality at a very very fair price now moving on to the next one Christopher Nkunku, no chance. Uh, Christopher Nkunku, no chance. Good player, uh, has amazing numbers, absolutely amazing numbers, but he's uh, valued at 100 million euros. Yeah, I want him. I want him. Do you want him? I want him, 100%. His numbers are really tempting. 20 goals last campaign um, and 13 assists. <laughs> Imagine that. In the German Bundesliga alone. Imagine that. 26 goals scored for uh, for Arab Leipzig in no competition. And the campaign before that, he had scored six goals in the German Bundesliga and assisted six times. I think it's one that's going to keep on getting better and better. If you look at the moves that have been linked with him, you have Liverpool and you also have PSG. That speaks volumes about his quality and how uh, the transfer market and how uh, you know clubs feel he is already ready to get to the next level. But for me, should Arsenal spend 100 million euros on Christopher Nkunku, yet you can spend 55 or 65 on Rafinha, you can spend uh, less than that on Richarlison, you can spend less than that on Serge Nabre. In my opinion, no. I think there is a lot of hype around him uh, because of the last campaign. I don't know if he can do replicate that campaign but if he does then it's going to be a massive asset for RB Leipzig moving on to the next targets now Rhyme Starling perfect buy perfect buy I think with Rhyme Starling Arsenal and Mikel Arteta would get everything they need in the you know in, in, in that position a forward who has the experience winning mentality has seen it all and is going to give you consistent numbers Raheem Sterling is one of the players in the Premier League that have been uh, you know doubling and that have been averaging double figures 
per campaign in terms of scoring goals and also assisting. 13, uh, uh, last campaign, 13 goals and 5 assists. And the campaign before that, 10 goals and 7 assists. If you're looking for a player to support your striker, if you're looking for a player to support your attack with consistent goals game in game out campaigning campaign out i think all these players have suffered from uh pep Guardiola's massive squad rotation all the time continuous squad rotation all the time but if not that in my opinion Raheem sterling is a player arsenal would want to go for i mean he's gonna only cost around 45 million euros chelsea that is what they're gonna pay in my opinion Go for him. Yes, we might not have Champions League football, but can we try to convince him? Just try to convince him. Uh, I mean, he's one of those young, not young, but very exciting, uh, you know, English footballers that are not going to come with that English premium. Not 45, I mean, 45 frame Sterling, there is no premium, right? If Jared Bowen is 75 million euros, Sterling should be 100 million euros, honestly. You sign him, you've signed in a very, very wonderful asset. So, Raheem Sterling, for me, is a perfect buy. Serge Nabry. I'm humbled, but it's a good deal. It's just a good deal. Come on, guys. Yes, he played for Arsenal, and we are nostalgic about him coming back. But it's just a perfect, it's just a good deal. There is nothing more special around him. Yes, he has the experience. He's won it all with Bayern. What else? So what? It's just it's just a it's just a good deal. It's not even a perfect one. Yeah, I look. I cannot put him in the no chance category because Bayern are going to ask for around 35, 30 million euros for anyone who's gonna buy him. He's left with uh, with one year on his contract. Um, the reason that's why I've not put him in the perfect uh, you know perfect category is if you look at what we are having at the moment, Saka is averaging seventeen goal involvement campaign and marginally given if, if you give him the chance he's gonna average 17 goal involvement and more per campaign what is Sagnabri doing at Bayern 14 goals last campaign uh, and five assists and the campaign before that 10 goals and two assists he's he's at that level honestly he's at at that you know he is at that level uh, and of course that is away from the Premier League if he comes to the Premier League the numbers could, uh, could even rise or drop depending on how uh, he, he adapts to the league but in my opinion not really a perfect deal but a good one for Arsenal a good one I mean 35 million euros for you know for such a player is a it's an absolute bargain Arsenal would only have to deal with the wages Richarlison <sighs> is it a perfect buy for Arsenal to get Richarlison uh, this summer for around 60 million euros. I can't disagree with that. I can't disagree with that. Richarlison is um has been a, com a consistent performer for Everton. I know many people don't like him. I actually like him a lot. Richarlison, 10 goals last campaign and 7 assists. Uh, and of course, 7 goals uh, the campaign before that and 3 assists. Double figures in the last 2 campaigns. I think he's one that has reached that level of making a switch. And it's one that Arsenal should be looking at as a player who comes in and probably not very far away from what we have at the moment. But he's going to explode. He will explode. Trust me, if he goes to Spurs, if he goes to Chelsea, he will explode. He's a very, very good player. I, I mean, what excites me about Richardson is his ability to play narrowly just as a forward i mean just as um you know as a support striker close to uh dominic cover Cav and solomon Don rondon scoring as many goals as he can and then also his ability to play very wide and stretch the length of the pitch i love players who can do that rich allison would be a good buy 60 million euros almost the same amount of money uh for uh for 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 rich uh for 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 rafinha but i think rich allison for me would be just perfect for Arsenal. Would be just perfect. Marco Asensio. No. Marco Asensio. Where would you rank Marco Asensio? In my opinion, no chance. No chance. Um, and why I'm saying no chance for Marco Asensio, Madrid want almost 40 million euros in Marco Asensio, a player who has been very, very inconsistent. There is no proof whatsoever that if Arsenal signed him away from Real Madrid, brought him in, 
is going to be any better or any different. His, uh, you know, his game time at Real Madrid is actually very, very uh, disappointing. But one thing you can uh, rely on him, last campaign, 10 goals, 0 asses. The campaign before that, 5 goals and 2 asses. I think we have that, right? I think we have that in the team. Martinelli, last campaign, 6 goals and 6 asses. I think we have that in the team. Marco Asensio, not a deal that would make a lot of sense in my, you know, for me, in my opinion. Rafa Liao. No chance. No chance. Uh, the, the price that has been put around him is the only reason why I would put him uh, in the no chance category. He's been phenomenal. He is phenomenal. The put, uh, look, I only learned you know, a few days back that he's Portuguese. I thought the guy was uh, you know, French or something, but he's Portuguese. That just makes that Portuguese side scary, doesn't it? But when you think about Rafa Leal, you're talking about 11 goal involvements, goals actually, uh, last campaign, and 8 assists. That is 19 goal involvements as uh, as, uh, it, uh, as Italian Serie A champions in Milan, AC Milan, were winning the, uh, the Scudetto. And the campaign before that, we are talking about, um, uh, we are talking about um, uh, 6 goals and 6 assists for him in the Italian Serie A. Would be very, very good for Arsenal. But why I'm putting him in the no chance category? I mean, who's going to pay 100 million euros for him? 100 million euros. Not really. I think Milan want to keep him. And that's why they put a very high price tag around his neck. And I absolutely understand that. Moussa Diabe would be a good deal for Arsenal. Yeah. Moussa Diabe would be a good deal for Arsenal. I think Balevacuzin have only said 75 million euros because they feel we should hold on to the player for another campaign. But if you bro if you went in with 50 million euros plus some bonuses and add-ons, they would let the player go. Moussa Diabe has been one of those very exciting players uh, for Balevacuzin last campaign. 13 goals and 12 assists. That is 25 goal contribution for them in the German Bundesliga. And 4 goals and 10 assists in the campaign before that. He's just getting better. You can see uh, averaging, uh, averaging more than 10 assists uh, per campaign. And now uh, last campaign exploding in terms of scoring goals. Where he scored 13 for Bale Verkusen. So a good deal for us, no? He, could not, he might not ask, actually cost a lot of money. But one that would definitely make a lot of sense. Osman Dembele, lastly, no chance, no chance. The wages he's gonna ask for as a player are astronomical, and uh, despite the fact that he could live on a free from Barcelona, uh, but the you know his wages are going to be astronomical, and we do not have any guarantees that when he comes in at Arsenal, he stays fit. Problems have been with injuries, and what we are looking at, we are looking at, uh, we, are, we are looking at. Uh, squad depth to, pro to solve our problems when it comes to injuries. That's why I would stay away from that one. Definitely stay away. That is my ranking of uh, all wingers linked with Arsenal. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below.